So now we're going to look at when we're comparing two independent groups for the margin of error. So what we mean by independent groups would be a situation like comparing the males versus females. If a female voter changes her mind, and if the female percentage will change, but the male percentage will not. So what we're saying is there's independence. If one group's results shift or change, it has no impact on the other group's results. So males and females are a common example of this. Another example could be something like uh, different polls. So if you're comparing 2012 to 2014 results, for instance, the results from 2012, if somebody changed their mind then, it doesn't necessarily affect what happens in 2014. They're independent. Versus, again, in the dependent case that we had just looked at, like national versus labor, that's all one group. We're just looking at the poll all together in one group. So if somebody changes their mind from national, nationals will go down and labors will go up. It affects both groups. They're dependent. So with independent groups, um, what we need to remember here is our rule is going to be the margin of error is going to be 1.5 times the average MOE. And we'll talk about what that means, but we're going to have to calculate the average MOE of both the groups. Um, so that's our rule for this. And there's a few assumptions that we need to be aware of that sometimes come into play. So if I asked you what's the margin of error for women in the Colmar poll we've been looking at, well, if we go back to that poll, there's really no information in there about women at all. So if we had to make an assumption, um, or if we had to make, make a call on this, we would make the assumption that we would assume a 50-50 split if no information is given. So if we don't know otherwise, we can just assume that it's half men, half women. But sometimes they do tell us. So again, as an example here, if we had the sample of 1002, and we're assuming 50%, 50%, we're going to say 50% women, so that's going to be 501 and 50% men, 501. And sometimes that's the case where the actual margin of error that we'll get for both of these different groups, the men and the women, will be the same because the sample size is the same, but it's not always the case. In a situation like this, if they are the same, we'll find out that the average is just, well, the same as one of them. But to go through that process, um, the MOE for the women is going to be 1 over the square root of 501 is get you 0 0.0446. And again, we times by 100 to get to a percentage, so we're going to get plus or minus 4.5 if we round. And the MOE for the min would be the same, 1 over the square root of 500, and again, 0 0.0446, times it by 100 to get your percentage, and you'd get plus or minus 4.5 as well. So just to remind us about taking averages, our average MOE will be 4.5 plus 4.5. We add up the two different groups and then divide that by 2. And in this case it's 4.5 because the average of two identical things is just that same thing. So to calculate the MOE we would use in this problem, we now need to go 1.5 times the average so that's 1.5 times 4.5, and we get plus or minus 6.75% in this case. So if we had equal numbers of men and women, our average MOE would be 4.5, and when we use our difference to calculate this, to find the difference between them, we would use the 1.5 times that, which is 6.75. So Let's look at another example that kind of builds on this, um, which is more common to what you'll see where we actually have different percentages. So I've just made this up, but if we assume that the Colmar poll found that 40% of 44% of females and 51% of males were in favor of national, can we claim that more men favor national? Because looking at that, 51% looks like more men, right? So 
I've been giving, I'm going to give you some information here, and again, this is not directly from the poll, I'm just making it up, but using the same context. So, we're going to say that 40% of the respondents were female. So, in my sample of 1002, I know that 40% were uh, female. So, to find out how many that is, I need to turn 40 into a decimal. Oops. So 40 to 40% 40 divided by 100 will give you 0 0.4, which you could go directly to if you're familiar with that, and then times it by the sample size, 1,002, and we're going to get 400.8 women, and we'll round that to roughly 400 women. So if we have 40% females, we're going to assume then that we would get 60% males. So again, let's find out how many males there are. 60 divided by 100 times 1,002 is going to get us 601.2 and we'll round that to roughly 601 men. So what we need to do now is find our margin of error for each of these, the men and the women. So the MOE for the females is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 400 which is equal to 0 0.05 times that by 100 to get our percentage and we get plus or minus 5% for the females. The margin of error for the men 1 over the square root of 601 is equal to 0 0.041 Again, you should try these in your calculator on your own just to make sure you're okay with doing the calculations. And to get to a percentage, again, we times by 100. In this case, we get plus or minus 4.1%. And just to remind us again, um, the sample size for women is a lot smaller than it is for men, and you'll notice the, samples, or the margin of error for women is bigger than the margin of error for men, which is what we've talked about, that a larger sample gives a smaller MOE. So just illustrating that point again. But now that we've got this, we need to do our calculation with it to see if we can support this claim. So our first step here is going to be to find the difference. Between um, the men and women. So men versus male versus female. So here we have 51 minus 44. So the difference here is going to be 7%. We can see there's a 7% difference between males and females. So our second step is going to be to use 1.5 times the average MOE on the difference to get our confidence interval. So let's find out what 1.5 times the average is. So 1.5 times we calculate our average by adding them up 5 plus 4.1 and dividing by 2. So um, this becomes, you can do it on one step or we can break it out into two steps. If you put these into the calculator, 5 plus 4.1 divided by 2, make sure you put brackets or do it in two steps. You get average, and our margin of error we're going to use here ends up being 6.825%. So, now that we've got our difference and we know our margin of error, we're going to say if we have 7 in the middle, on one end we're going to have 7 minus 6.825. And on the other end, we'll have 7 plus 6.825 to calculate our confidence interval. So, doing that, we're going to get um, 0 0.175 to 13.825%. So again, this is the confidence interval of the difference between males and females. So we're saying that we're 95% confident
that the males lead um, maybe we can say that, that more males sorry if you're twinking, do it in your own way <laughs> that the more that more males favor national than females because the confidence interval does not include zero. And again, what this confidence interval here means, and maybe you've got space to write it, or you can just think about this, but what this means, again, is that the difference between the males and females that support national could be as low as 0.175% or as high as 13.825%. So there's some range there, some range of values that you can get um, for this difference because of that sample, ver sample error and uncertainty. But because both of these are above zero, we're saying that even in the worst case scenario at the you know 0 0.175, that's still ever so slightly a male lead in the poll. And at the best case scenario, or maybe the other worst case scenario, I'm not sure, the two extremes is the men lead by quite a bit, by 13, almost 14 percent. So here, because we don't include zero, we can say that we do support that claim, um, that we are 95 percent confident that more males favor national than females because the confidence interval does not include zero. So here we do support the, the um, claim. Can we support that claim? Yes, yes we can. So. Um, in the next video, I'm going to finish this last example using the similar one where you've got to find the average of the MOE and decide whether or not you can support the claim. So just be aware of that when you calculate these problems. You need to make sure you go back and look at the question. You know, can we support that more men favor, favor nationals? So yeah, um, we are 95% confident that more men favor national than females because the CI does not include confidence interval. Maybe even we could say in here, um, yes, we can support the claim that males are more in favor than females.